Now in this A-level IB biology video, it's a very specific video where I show you how you can work out which amino acid you get based on three bases or a codon. So make sure you watch my other videos if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about. Just as a little summary though, what this video is really about is the genetic code. And remember, three bases code for one amino acid. That's crucial. Now these three bases are found on the mRNA and remember they have a specific name, which is that they are a codon. So remember that mRNA is a single stranded molecule. It's formed from the DNA, which is found in the nucleus. And remember that single stranded mRNA contains a sequence of bases. So something like uracil, adenine, guanine, guanine, cytosine, uracil, adenine. I'm just making up a sequence. But remember, this single-stranded molecule of mRNA binds to a ribosome. And really what I'm saying here is that three of these bases are what's known as a codon. Now, it's really important that each codon is made up of three bases. And that's because if you think about the fact that there are four different bases, so U, A, G, C, what that means is the fact that there are four different bases and these can be arranged in all kinds of different orders. Effectively, what that means, because each codon is made up of three bases, you get this setup where actually four cubed provides the number of codons which are available, which is 64. And this is really important because that means that we have more than enough variety to create the 20 different amino acids which we find in proteins and polypeptides. Don't worry too much if you're not that happy about what I'm saying. I'm going to get into what this video is really about shortly, which is all about understanding which amino acid is generated from the base sequence. So there are lots of different tables which you can actually use to help you work out the amino acid. This stretch is the one that I find most straightforward. So let's have a look. What do we have here? Well, if I use my highlighter, this central part of the table contains lots of different amino acids in their shortened name version. And then going around the edge, there's the first base that would make up the codon, there's the second base that would make up the codon, and there's the third base that would make up the codon. Now the easiest way to show you what's going on is if I give you a sequence such as this one. So remember this is an mRNA single strand. Now the first thing to do is to break that up into its respective codons. So remember each codon consists of three bases. There's the first codon, here's the second, third and fourth. And I'm going to list them here. So the first codon is CAC. So if we look at our codon, we can see that the first base is C. So I look along first base and I know we're looking at C. So what does that tell me? Well, I know my amino acid that will be generated will exist somewhere within these two lines. Then the second base is A. So I know, therefore, that I'm narrowing down my options and that my amino acid will exist within this box. And then lastly, how do I work out which amino acid it is? Well, I look at my third base, which is C, and that tells me, therefore, that it's his, which is histidine. Don't worry about the names of the amino acids that I'm sure your exam board will give you the names in full. I just like this table, which is why I chose it. Let's try another example. So now the second codon is AGA. Same rules apply. The first base is A, so we're looking at amino acid between these two lines. Second base is G, so that narrows us down to this box. Third base is A, and therefore we know that our amino acid is arginine. Now to look at the third codon, UGG. So the first base is U, so we know our amino acid is between these two lines. The second base is G, so it exists within this box. Third base is G, so therefore it's TRIP, which stands for tryptophan. And then finally, the fourth and final codon, GUC. So I've circled the first base G. The amino acid therefore lies between these two lines. U, our amino acid exists in this box. C, therefore our amino acid is valine. So I hope you can see that this is a fairly straightforward way of working out which amino acids are generated from particular codons. Remember that you can also use the table the other way around. So you can use it to find codons which code for a particular amino acid. So for example, methionine, which I've circled here, 
Now what's interesting about methionine is that it is a start codon. And what that really means is that every single amino acid therefore starts with methionine. And we can use the table to work out what codon is required to generate the amino acid methionine. And we're basically doing a reverse of the steps. So we can see from methionine that the third base will be G. We can see from methionine, because we're focusing in on this box, that the second base will be U. And then lastly, because we're in this box, we can see that the first base will be A. So AUG is the start codon and codes for the amino acid methionine. Now obviously all polypeptides have a particular length. So how does that polypeptide stop growing? Well, a stop codon needs to be reached and that effectively cuts off the polypeptide. So have a look at what I've circled. These are the stop codons. If the codon produces a stop, then the polypeptide chain cuts off. So what bases are responsible for producing a stop codon? Well, we can do the same thing again. So how do we produce the red circled stop? Well, we reverse our steps. So we can see that it's a G. We can see that there's an A. And then lastly, we can see that U was involved. So the stop codon for red is UAG. How about the stop codon for yellow? Well, that's A, G, U again. And then lastly, how do we produce the stop codon, which is produced by the pink circle? Well, we're looking at A, A, U. And therefore, there are the three codons which produce the stop and therefore cut off the polypeptide. <laughs>